Day one opening is a creative challenge making doors to trade with our swap partners. Following along with Louisa Heinzel and 49 Dragonflies for Defimmerimber. Hi everyone, Patty here. I cut four pieces of cardboard. It's not too thick, but sturdy enough to hold my layers for my door idea. Plus, I want them to fit into a large envelope, and hopefully not a padded envelope, or it will cost more to mail. I also cut with my rectangular nesting dies the largest size rectangle, 3 inches by 4.5 inches. So I have four large pieces of cardboard cut out. I want to make four doors. I think these will be great for journal covers, and we won't know what we are doing with the doors until December 31st as an added prompt. Plus, my scrap partner Darcy at Darcy's Mixed Media wants to trade. I can't wait to see what she comes up with. I add molding paste to the cardboard in a thin layer. I want this cardboard to look like corrugation, but without the thickness of heavy cardboard. I wasn't too careful on getting it even. I just wanted to get the look. Using a tool from the hardware store to achieve the look I was going for, this scraper has different grooves along each side, and I'm using the medium size. I do this to all four pieces of my large cardboard and one of the smaller door panels. I didn't end up using the smaller door panel for this project because I like what I do later with some oxide inks. I have two embossing folders that will work for the doors. With using cardboard through the embossing folder, I like to spray the heavy duty cardboard or cardstock with water before running it through the big shot. This one's a wood grain, and this one is a 3D embossing folder, Foundry by Tim Holtz. Just mist with a little bit of water before running it through your big shot. It's a little hard to see the embossing in the cardboard at this point, but as I add my layers, you will see the texture come out. I want two doors to be a blue vintage look and two doors to be a teal color. I spray with Distress ink trying to get a vintage age patina look to my doors. I also have a handmade spray that I made using walnut oxide reinker and walnut crystals with water. I don't have the proportions to this as I just kept adding oxide ink and walnut crystals to a spray bottle full of water till I got the color I was going for. I sprayed this spray over the oxide inks which activated the oxide and gave me the patina aged look I was going for. I'm only working on two of the door jams, but we'll have to do a few more as I needed to get a thicker layer for my door jams, which I show later in the video. Walnut crystals add so much texture. Depending on how much water you add to the crystals and how much they fade into the design, I just sprinkle a little here and there to add interest to my doors. The oxide inks dry light, so I kept adding a little more to get the color I was trying to achieve. My blue was just about gone, the Mermaid Lagoon, so I just had to kind of sprinkle it and just tap it with the stem of it onto the pieces to get a little more of it. let these dry and I'm going to work on two of the back panels 
These back door panels can be trimmed down to fit the size you need to fit your space. I wanted two of my doors to have a rounded top to them, so I searched my craft room to find a circle large enough the arc I wanted. My tub of matte medium was the perfect size. I lined the top of the door with the tub and traced the arc onto the back side of the cardboard. I did this to two panels. And then I cut this shape out to get the arched doorways. I want to cut some hinges out of cardboard. I have an Elizabeth Craft Designs hardware. It's a steel cutting die. It comes with five hinges. I cut the hinges several times because I wanted to be able to double the cardboard layers up to give a thicker hinge to add to my doors. I also used the large setting on my corner rounder to round one door panel. I needed to do this before I get too many more layers added to this panel. After cutting out the hinges with my die cuts, I glued two hinges together for each hinge and punched the holes out that didn't get punched when I ran them through my big shot. The scale of these I think is going to work great. I have on order some molds for hinges, but they haven't got here yet, and I really think they will be too big. Yeah, I like how these are going to look. I'll end up having a couple extra, but that's okay. I'll use the one I'm not going to use with trying some a different technique on them. But first I'm going to cover these all with black gesso. I cover the panels. I cover the hinges. I even covered one of the doors in black gesso, but I don't end up using it as I like the other panels I did in the oxides better. Make sure you get a good even coverage over the cardboard. It really soaks up the paint. Get the edges and all of the corners and let this dry and we'll try some different techniques to age the hinges. Okay, my hands are filthy. I'm going to go wash those, let those dry. I used clear embossing ink on two of the hinges and antique linen glaze. It didn't really achieve the look I was wanting. I did it a couple times to get a, even a thicker glaze, but in the end, 
I like the 3D foundry embossing folder. I added the hinges to the areas on the folder that had the most rivets and impressions I could get on a small piece. Once I add the gilding wax, you can see the impressions come out and the details. I'm using silver gilding wax. I really like this look, so I did all of my hinges with it. This is the look I wanted, and I start adding gilding wax to, ge to give each of the hinges an age patina look. First I put silver gilding wax and then I went back with a couple with the blue and the teal. I keep adding gilding wax to get the patina and the aged look I want. This really makes the groove stand out on the embossed doors. I add a little bit of the firebird of the gilding wax to the panels. I think it really makes it look like a corrugation on actual cardboard. It's just not as thick. I need another door jam, so I use the two rectangle in my nestling die cuts to get the next piece to get the door to stand up off the door panels. I cut four of the smaller rectangles and paint with black gesso. I want the outside piece and the inside piece, so I'm trying to layer this, line it up and tape it so it will be square. Because, see, I want that piece and the inside piece. 
but this is my door gem. Now I need four of those and I'm going to paint them with black gesso. I didn't go over these with an even coat because I wanted the jams to look weathered and aged. If a little bit of the cardboard showing this, I'm fine with that. I find my emery board and scruff them up a little bit. They just kind of pulled the paint and the, roughed up the cardboard. A little gilding wax and silver over the top of that highlighted those rough areas. And it helped it make it look more like a worn paint chipping off the door jams. Glue the second layer of the door jam to the first and glue these to the door panels. I have two stencils that have a one that has a brick look and one that has a rock look to it. So I went around the edges of the door to add more texture to my doors using the molding paste. I didn't try to get a real even coat of the molding paste as I wanted my rocks and bricks to look worn with age. I did two of the door panels with brick and two with rocks. I have a flower stencil that I added to the bottom of a couple of different places and along the sides. Wipe off any excess. I'll have to go back and touch up with a little black paint and this one, I, this stencil I thought looked like rocks. So I wanted the biggest rocks towards the bottom of my door with them going smaller towards the top. So we need to let that dry. And now I'm going to work on some ideas for my door handles. My brads are too big for my filigree pieces I have, so I cut the back side of the brad off before I remembered I have a metal hole punch and use it later. Of course, we need to add more ink around the edges. Vintage aged patina is what I want, and the layers of oxide and waxes achieve this look. The door panels are warping, so I added another layer of cardboard from cutting the second door jam to the backs of my doors. They are a little smaller, but it will give them enough stability, and it will work. I do this to all four door doors to add reinforcement to keep the doors from warping and buckling. I will put them under a few books to let them dry and flatten.
When the molding paste is dry on the, pan the door panels, I start adding color to my bricks, flowers, and rocks. For the flowers, I used forest moss, peeled paint, and fossilized amber. I put the re-inkers onto a plate and used a paintbrush to add a little color to the flowers, rocks, and bricks. For the bricks, I used lumberjack plaid and aged mahogany. I think the reds go almost pinky when dry, and so then I used a little black soot ink and touched them up with gilding wax. For the rocks, I used forest moss and black soot ink to add a few shadings around the edges. I want some of the white to show for highlights on my rocks and bricks. Mist the whole thing with a little water to get the oxides to age and dab off any extra heavy areas. I let these dry and go back to my hinges. The hinges need more ink around the edges. I end up using black to make them stand out even more on my doors. Does anyone else have pets that help them when they're trying to video something? I have two dogs and a kitten that we have adopted. And I tell you, this kitten has got everybody running. I have small brads that fit perfectly in the holes of the hinges. And I add more gilding wax around the edges of all of my panels. It also helped with the stark color of the rocks and the bricks. It has to have an aged look with years of patina. I have already glued the second door piece on my doors for reinforcement, but I want to put a piece of material along the edge for the doors will actually open and close. I tried to pry open the edge where I had glued them together, but why did I really worry about getting the material between the layers? I soon realized that I was going to tear up the door more than I should, so I just add the material strips along the edges. Two doors I cut in half, so I will have like a center opening or center hinge doors, and two doors I will leave whole so I can use the bigger hinges and doorknobs. My doors are three inches wide, so I cut two doors with one and a half inch seams down the center and add my material hinges to both sides. After cutting these in half, I'm trying to see which way is the direction I want them to go. And I soon realized I cannot get the cardboard between the two opened up to put them on, so I just glued it to the top. I keep looking at it, knowing that there's something a must here, but wasn't sure what it was. Now I realized I glued the piece on the wrong side. So I ripped it off and reapplied the glue and material down the other side. 
Luckily, art glitter glue doesn't dry real fast for me. When it does dry, it dries strong, and that will be important in the end. But right now, it gave me time to fix my air. Okay, now I've got them going the right direction. I have these flowers that I want to change the color. White isn't going to work with my color scheme. So I use mustard seed spray and re-inker fossilized amber to give them a new color. I separated the flowers and got them off the stems. I used the, um, I separated the smaller petals and I wanted to do those in the darker color. This plate worked perfect to being able to smear them around and get them all covered with the ink and then I could just set it aside to dry. A little more gilding wax around the rocks and bricks. I am achieving the years of patina look I am wanting with each layer. It's really hard to see that look you get with the waxes on the camera, but each layer gives it an aged look. I'm going to add the doors with the hinges to the door panels. But first, a little more oxide inks around each door, giving two doors a teal look with peacock feathers and two doors a blue tint with faded jeans. I glue the material strip onto the door jams and get them as straight as I can up against the door jams. Lining up the split doors and getting them even was a task. I use plastic wrap to keep the material I glued down from sticking the doors to the door panels and put these under a book to keep from warping.
I decided I, before I put him under the books, though, that I wanted to go ahead and glue the hinges down and the flowers and a few of the filigree pieces. But I still want that plastic wrap to be in between these doors. So while I'm gluing the rest of the stuff down, my doors don't get glued to the center. Now I'm trying to decide which hinge will go with which door. I have some tiny buttons to add to the center of the flowers, but it just, it wasn't the style I was looking for. I had some rhinestones and that wasn't going to work. So I finally decided to add more brads to the center of the flowers. I thought that matched my hinges, because I had um, all the brads on the hinges. I have these pretty filigree pieces that are flat. I have one that's long, and then I have some that are kind of square, some that are rounded. I decide to put that square on top and do three of them across the top on one of them. On two of my hinges, I use blue brads. And so on that door, I went with blue brads for the center of my flowers. Some of the hinges held up to six brads each, and my supply of brads went quickly, but I really like the look I got from using them. Finally, I remember my metal punch and punched bigger holes in the filigree pieces so I could get the brads to fit into the centers. The blue brads add a nice touch to the center of the flowers. I wanted the doorknob to be just a little bit bigger, so I added one of the square filigrees under the brad that I'd put in a round one. So this is like three layers for my doorknob. A brad, a round, filigree and a square filigree. I bent in half back and forth the hinges so that they would open and close easily with my door and glued those down along with the flowers. The glue from the material hinge was still not dry, so I added my plastic wrap back between the layers and glued the rest of the pieces down on the door panels.
Line up the three filigree pieces across the arch of the door and glue those down. looking to see which hinges look best on which doors. And if the door is split, I need to cut the hinges in half so I have hinges for both sides. I used the bigger hinges so I could cut those in half for my split doors. Adding some of the finishing touches to the doors with small ring fasteners, brads, and filigree pieces. Trying to make sure that I get these ring fasteners for my doorknobs straight. Where I need to put this ring fastener for the doorknob is right where I wanted the wood grain of the knot of the wood to stand out, but now the doorknob is in its spot. Here's my finished doors. I really like how they turned out. Thank you for watching and leave me a comment on what you would do with these doors. I plan on trading with my scrap partner Darcy and who knows how we'll be using them December 31st with Defemember Ember. Have a great day!